How much protein should a person eat? This is a question I often hear. And I'll tell you, it's more than what most people believe they need and less than what folk think those on the carnivore diet consume. Please stick around for the rest of the story. Hey folks, Dr. Alan Davis here. Plant-based advocates are going to tell you protein is essential, but most people eat too much. Also, those who eat too much protein, especially animal protein, will develop kidney disease, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Of course, none of these claims are substantiated by reliable science, that is, good science that involves a random clinical trial. It's always this epidemiological, observational stuff that involves anecdotal evidence at best. Now, if a person sticks to a vegan diet, he or she is going to intake, at most, about 15% of calories from protein. And this is what drives the U.S. recommended daily allowance. They recommend, that is the RDA, 0.8 grams of protein intake per kilogram of body weight. So let's take a look at the math for a second, shall we? Now, I weigh 190 pounds, which is about 86.4 kilograms. That means, based on the US RDA, I should be eating no more than 69 grams of protein a day, which amounts to approximately 14% of total energy intake, assuming a 2,000 calorie diet. But the real question is, is that enough, considering I'm rather active and have a vigorous strength training regimen? Now, a recent study showed that upwards of 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram is a better gauge if one is trying to build strength, which we all know we should be doing if possible. Go back and look at those videos that I made earlier in the series. And so if that's the case, that's about 130 grams for me, which results in about 25% of total calories from protein. Now, this study found that any intake greater than this wasn't necessary in other words, it's kind of a plateau, a law of diminishing returns, and that any gains in strength would subsequently also begin to plateau right around this one and a half grams per kilogram of body weight. For the average person seeking to gain mass and strength, this intake is sufficient, but I would contend it's the bare minimum for mass and strength gains. Remember, when you put your body under a significant stress, give it ample time to recover, to include rest and good nutrition, and adapt to, an adaptation takes place. And the amount of protein we take in helps not only the muscles, about 40% of that goes to fuel the muscles, and the rest goes to repair cartilage, uh, build up the bone, and so forth. The 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight is really, from everything that I've seen in the research, just enough to live so that the body doesn't catabolize itself, in particular the muscle tissue, the connective tissue, and even the bones. And depending upon your personal goals, as well as chronological age, I would contend that a better marker would be 2.2 grams of protein intake per kilogram of body weight, which amounts to one gram per pound of body weight. All right? And those of us who are older, that is 50 plus, we need to think that a higher protein intake is actually indicated, it's prescribed, because as we get older, we tend to lose that muscle mass due to sarcopenia and atrophy. So we need to make sure that both resistance training and a good protein intake are both uh, included in the protocol so that we can continue to thrive in our older chronological years. We must also understand, despite what many plant-based advocates contend, animal proteins and plant proteins vary significantly in how the body uses them. Gram for gram, they are not the same. Their bioavailability is starkly diverse when using an apples to apples comparison. Now, I have heard over the years, and I was of this position at one point myself, staunch vegan advocates state that animal proteins are acidic and are therefore deleterious to the body, especially the kidneys. In turn, they state plant proteins are alkaline and are more easily digestible to keep the body's pH better balanced. Now, I'm not going to go into the chemistry of this idea, but suffice it to say, such a claim is utter nonsense and defies, <clears throat> excuse me, defies all concepts of human physiology. It's what the plant advocates want you to believe, but they're never able to back it up with sound science. Here's a simple example just to consider. There are people who have to use a colostomy bag because of problems with their colon. Never have I heard about a case of undigested meat being found in a colostomy bag, but there are numerous cases of undigested plant material that are high in protein that remain. So from what I can tell, it appears the body is more adept at digesting the meat and thus assimilating its nutrients much more efficiently than it is the plants. One thing to remember is this, and this is really at the core of what we're going to talk about. At best, plant protein bioavailability is about 17%, which means that of what is taken into the body, only 17% is going to be used for muscle tissue, connective tissue, and bone. Whereas animal proteins such as beef 
is double that figure. Moreover, a whole egg is upwards of 50% bioavailable. And so just so we understand, again, bioavailability refers to the amount of protein the body is able to use to build muscle tissue, repair connective tissue, and fortify the bones. As we wrap this up, I want to shift gears and talk about the best sources of protein for the body. I'm not going to discuss plant proteins because despite what some folk might say about tofu or quinoa, for example, being sources of complete proteins, I don't agree. And the reason is they each lack in certain amino acid levels. So in other words, they don't have the complete uh, amino acid level in every section, eight or nine, whatever you want to look at as far as the essential amino acids, despite all of them being present. And so the body is only going to assimilate them at the lowest common denominator. That's what needs to be understood. And frankly, this results in a significant amount of waste. It's very inefficient for the body, hence the lower bioavailability. So the best sources of animal protein are as follows. Raw dairy. And the reason I put it at number five, uh, so it's going from five, four, three, two, one. So worst to best. Raw dairy. And the reason I put it there is some people have allergic reactions uh, to dairy just in general. But if you go raw dairy, as I talked about in a prior video, you're going to be much better off. Now, that doesn't mean you have to do that, but if you like dairy and you're not able to deal with pasteurized, homogenized, things along those lines, then by all means, give raw dairy a try. Uh, the next on the list would be cheese. Um, you know, mild cheddar, sharp cheddars, uh, things along those lines. Those are actually good for the body. Uh, some feta cheeses, um, you know, whether it comes from the sheep or the cow or the goat, those are also very uh, good for the body. And folk have, tend to have less allergic reactions to cheese than they would other forms of dairy, as, for example, milk uh, and yogurt and things along those lines. The next would be fish and seafood. And it's very interesting that fish and seafood would be next. And the reason they are such a good source of protein is because of the essential both omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids in good proportions, such that the balance is oh, about one to one in terms of three to six. The next that I would put on the list would be red meat. Uh, for example, beef and lamb. Now, some might contend that, no, fish and red meat should be flip-flop. And the only reason I say they're not is because you can get a good amount of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids from grass-fed and grass-finished red meat, be it beef or lamb. Um, now, the, the secret to that is you want to have 80-20 beef or lamb or fattier, ideally 70-30. You can even make it fattier if you were to add some beef tallow, for example, to a ground beef mix. That would help quite a bit too. And the reason, another reason why I like to rank red meat higher than fish and seafood is simply because we are mammals. And both cows and sheep are mammals. Their muscular structure, their amino acid makeup, and just overall physiology is much more akin to ours than is a fish, for example. So even though essentially from a bioavailability bio standpoint, they're the same, the, the fact that these ruminant animals are more closely related to us in terms of just physiology makes them a better source of protein. Not to mention, for those of you who are biblically inclined, the first on the list that was given in Leviticus 11 was the clean ruminant animals and then the fish. So it just kind of stands to reason in overall bioavailability and utility for the body. And then number one on this list would be whole eggs, simply because they are nutrient dense. They're one of the best sources of food on the planet. Their bioavailability is near 50%. And frankly, the only thing that beats that would be mother's milk. But, and so unless you have a, a source of that somewhere, we're just gonna take that out of the equation and we're gonna leave it at eggs. At the end of the day, the ultimate key to protein intake is ensuring the fat intake remains high, roughly 65 to 75%, based upon both protein at 25 to 30% and carbohydrates limited to 5%. Finally, it's also important to understand too lean of a protein intake can result in protein toxicity, although this is quite rare. Yet, if the vegan Nazis had their way, we'd be eating the leanest animal protein, if any at all, foregoing the healthy saturated and monounsaturated fats. And in time, we would be taking our brains to the equivalent of a frontal lobotomy. I refuse to give up the good health that I've realized since moving to a 99% carnivore diet. Now, before you go, please share your comments below, like this video if you haven't already done so, and then also subscribe to this channel. Until next time, this is Dr. Alan Davis wishing above all things that you might prosper, be in health, and live life more abundantly. And please understand, we want to achieve a high level of physical and mental health so we might be a blessing to others. Take care and be strong.